Every guitarist and every musician has that moment when they feel like they hit a wall. They're tired of what they're playing, feeling like it's just the same old thing over and over again, and they compare themselves to others and have a look at what they're doing and wonder how it seems so much better. Recently, that's something that I've been struggling with personally. So today we're going to be looking at lead lines and solos and how to make them more expressive, more melodic and more memorable. So we'll start with a very quick rundown of the basics of approaching lead lines and solos. Um, but if you feel like you're already very confident in that area, you can just skip to the timecode that appears here. When first beginning to play lead lines and solos, you begin by learning scales. And usually the first scale that you learn is the pentatonic scale. And I recently just did a video on the pentatonic scale, which you can find by clicking the pop-up now. From the pentatonic, you move into the natural major and minor scales. From there you move into modes and so on, all while learning the different positions and inversions of all of the scales to unlock a bit more of the fretboard. And in conjunction with this, you're also looking at chords and arpeggios and the different expanded positions of all of them. So you know where to land for the chord tones, which highlights more of the underlying harmonic movement in your playing. An important thing to keep in mind here is that knowing shapes and positions is very valuable, but it's only half the battle. In order to use notes, scales, chords, arpeggios in as competent a way as you can, it's very important to know what you're using and why. And this is where theory comes in, helping you to see what works and why instead of just guessing. And it's from here that you can begin to embellish your playing with a little bit more of your own voice. Uh, through different techniques, changing accents, uh, using different intervals. The, the possibilities really are endless, but the point is that the foundation of a very strong understanding of solo and lead line theory is there from which to build off. Now, this is all well and good and very necessary, but it's one thing to know what to play and why, and another thing entirely to make it feel natural, to play in a way that's melodic, to play in a way that's expressive and memorable. It's a little like learning all of the words in a new language without knowing how to structure them in a way that's cohesive. Which brings us to the bulk of the content for today's video, which is phrasing. Phrasing is the way in which a musician or composer combines notes to create a musical sentence. Although it can be very subtle, it often makes the difference between a memorable solo and note soup. Now I'm the first person to know what it's like to want to just play, to want to just take the shackles off, jump all over the fretboard and think nothing about it. Um, and there's nothing wrong with this, uh, far from it actually, especially if it's the style that you're going for. Um, if anything, it's actually quite cathartic, but chances are it's not going to be very melodic and it's not gonna be very memorable. <laughs> One of the key things that I found during my research for this video was the importance of phrasing, of avoiding run-ons, avoiding overplaying, and basically just letting nothing uh, breathe. When you break your leads into bite-sized chunks, when you add a bit of space and a bit of silence, and silence is very important because silence can actually draw the listener in, you're giving your leads um, a natural structure, a, an order, and almost punctuation. So already you can hear the difference between those two passages with the latter feeling much more natural, uh, more pleasant to listen to because it's easier to follow um, and easier to interact with for the listener. There was some great advice from Samurai Guitarist, which was to treat your solo like you would a chapter in a story. So you begin with opening, you think of how you might open it with like a big flashy bend or a fast lick or anything like that. 
Uh, you think about how chapters have different sentences. So some sentences are longer, some sentences are shorter. Uh, you think about the punctuation in those sentences, how they communicate, um, the ideas within these sentences. So some have more simple ideas in which you can use a pentatonic scale. Uh, others have more complex ideas in which you can use a more complex scale uh, or even just completely play outside what's going on. Um, and then you come to ending the chapter, which is you can end on, end on something very simple, very easy, or you can end on like a, a cliffhanger, whatever that means to you. The point here is to just take your time, develop your ideas, allow your creativity to come through and let your passages breathe. Think of it like a conversation that you're having with the listener or the audience, uh, or even if you were singing what you were playing, which funnily enough takes us on to our next point, which is approaching your lead lines as if they were vocal lines. With singers, every note is important. Unlike guitar players, singers typically can't sing very fast. So every note needs to stand out. Every note needs to perfectly connect to the next. Nothing can afford to be unimportant or out of place and everything needs to relate to the overall idea and the emotion that's being expressed. Singers also need to breathe, which works in a very organic, natural phrasing in the passages, all of which comes together to create a melody line that is heavily melodic, heavily expressive, very memorable, and very natural. And all of this we can emulate in our own solos and lead lines by simply approaching it as if it was something to be sung. So a great way to start practicing this and integrating this is to look at your favorite singers, look at your favorite songs or your favorite vocal lines and really break down what it is that they're doing. Look at what notes, scales, mood they're using, look at how they're phrasing things and try and copy and emulate that in your own playing and really try and copy it here. Everything from the timbre of their voice to their inflections to their vibrato everything because this is a fantastic way to force you out of your comfort zone and into places that you otherwise may not have gone. So I'm just going to pick one of my favorite songs at the moment, which is a song called Insert Girl's Name Here by a band called The Lucas State. Um, and I'm just going to play along with the melody and the chorus and I'm going to try and emulate what the vocalist is doing. <laughs> Now, even though I'm just copying an existing melody there, you can already hear how much more expressive it sounds. It's the type of moment that you hear and you wish that you'd written in one of your solos. So running with that, we can take that further and put you more in touch with your inner musical voice by singing in unison with what you're playing. Both Tyler from the Music Is Wind channel and Samurai Guitarist talk about this as being a fantastic way to develop your solos, but also that it will take time to practice and integrate because essentially what you're doing is synchronizing what you're hearing in your head with what it is that you're playing on your guitar. And by mastering this, you're becoming truly in sync with your inner musical voice. And singing along will also help you work in those natural pauses as you stop to breathe. For a couple of closing points, remember that while solos do inherently stand out, there is a larger overall story also being told. And the best lead lines to me are the ones which take the ideas that are presented, they run with it, they build on it, but they complement it and they remain a part of the whole. So before you play, remember to simply listen. Just 
take some time to feel the rhythm, feel the beat, feel the pulses, and get in touch with the larger overall story that's being told so that you can choose what it is that you want to express and what it is that you want to contribute. As a quick example, I'll just uh, share with you guys my current favorite solo of all time, which is the solo that is at two minutes and 20 seconds in uh, The Last of the Wilds by Nightwish. Uh, to me, this solo is just utter perfection. It is, it is textbook solo theory and it's just, it's so good. <laughs> And finally, uh, as out of place as this may seem after I've just spent the last however long bombarding you with information, um, remember to relax. Stay comfortable, stay calm, and give yourself the space for your creativity to breathe because that's what will see you playing at your best. But that about does it for today, guys. Uh, as always, I hope that there was something in this video that you guys were able to learn from uh, because after all, that is the point of all of this. So if you did learn something, please let me know. Uh, or even if you have any suggestions or any tips or tricks or anything relating to solo theory and anything like that. Uh, or even if you just want to say hi, um, comment below because I, I would really genuinely love to hear from you. If you like what I'm doing, uh, thanks and thanks in advance for doing all the usual business uh, to help support my channel and, and my videos. Um, but apart from that, uh, yeah, just thanks for sticking around and I will see you guys in a bit.